Hello, it's time for another exciting adventure of nodal analysis. So today we're going to look at something a little bit more involved than last time. Um, something strictly with current sources. So let's start our diagram. We're going to have a little current source on top. A resistor associated with it. And down here we're going to have a few more components. Some resistors, capacitors, inductors, the usual bit. And over here we're going to put in a current source. So this is certainly a little bit more complicated than many circuits we've had in the past. All right, now for some values. Uh, this top current source, which I'm going to call IX, will be a 10 amp current source, 10 at an angle of zero. The second current source we'll call IY, and that'll be 4 amps at an angle of 90 degrees. Resistor value right here will be 8 ohms. This resistor, 2 ohms. Resistor over on the end, 4. One in the middle over here will just be 1 ohm. The capacitor will be a minus J5. And the inductor will be a J10. Okay. All right, so the first thing we have to do for a nodal analysis is to identify the nodes. Okay, so remember we have as many equations as we have nodes less the ground reference node. Right, so we'll indicate our ground reference node first. And then other places where currents can combine and split. Well, we have one right here. We'll call this node A. There's another one right here, which we'll call node B. And then finally we have another large one over here, which we can call node C. All right, now we want to identify some uh, currents in here, individual branch currents and so forth. Eventually we're going to come up with equations that will solve for VA, VB, and VC. And you might recall that this is all about a KCL summation, so we need to identify some individual branch currents. And again, it doesn't really matter which direction you apply, everything will come out in the end. So whether I draw something left to right or top to bottom, um, it doesn't really matter as, as we'll see, it'll all come out. So I'll just start up here and come across, we'll say this is I1 through that 8 ohm resistor, through the 2 ohm. We'll call that I2, again, going left to right, um, coming down through here, through the 4 ohm resistor, we'll call this I3. And then through the 1 ohm resistor, I4, down through the capacitor, uh, that'll be I5. And then down through the inductor will be I6. Okay. So now we're going to do some KCL summation. So first we look at uh, node A, okay, um, and we're going to use a very simple standard that uh, you know, in has to equal out. Now you could do a KCL where you say, you know, everything must sum to zero, but I think uh, what's just as useful, and in this case sometimes more useful, is to write it in terms of currents going in versus currents coming out, right? What goes in has to equal what comes out. So looking at node A, right, we define what, what's coming out of here. Now this is kind of interesting because like I said before, the um, directions that we choose doesn't really matter. Well, what's coming in over here? Nothing, right? Ix is out, I1 is out, I2 is out, I3 is out. So we've got zero, basically. And that has to equal the other four currents. It has to equal... Ix plus I1 plus I2 
plus the i3. Okay. Now we will expand this out. So we're going to write things in terms of uh, Ohm's law equivalence, or if we have constants for them, you now we can substitute that in. Um, and we're going to put the constants, the known values, the fixed values, um, off on the left-hand side of the equals. So that would be right off the bat ix. Okay. So I've got um, ix over here. Of course, this is going to be a negative ix. And I can say, all right, that equals i1 plus i2 plus i3. Now, how do I describe i1, i2, and i3 in terms of uh, their Ohm's law equivalence? All right, so if I look at i1, this is essentially right, the current through the 8 ohm, which is the voltage across the 8 ohm divided by 8 ohms, right? Just an Ohm's law relation. So that's Va minus Vc divided by that 8 ohm resistor. Okay, 8 at an angle of 0. Um, or just eight, your choice. Then for I2, same sort of deal. All right, how do I describe I2? Well, that's VA minus VB. And that is sitting across that particular resistor, the 2 ohm. All right, I'll just call it 2. And finally, uh, we have our I3. Okay, so that's this current coming down here. What is I3? Well, that's a VA sitting across the 4 ohm. All right, so now I want to collect up my terms, my VA, v, VB, and VC terms, simplify this out. So the IX we, we know is um, going to be a negative 10 at an angle of 0. So the VA terms we have are uh, the 1 over 8, the 1 over 2, and the 1 over 4. So we'll just put these all together, right? 1 over 8 plus 1 over 4. It's 1 over 2. The sole VB term we have is right here, so that's going to wind up to be a minus uh, 1 half VB. And then the sole VC term we have is right here, which is this uh, 1 over 8 ohms for that one. Right. And that is our uh, first equation as far as all the parts are concerned. Now, we'll simply figure out these values, and I'm going to rewrite that up here. All right, so here's our sort of our final equation, if you will, uh, for VA, right? So that's going to be negative 10 at an angle of 0. The 1 eighth plus the 1 half plus the 1 quarter is going to be uh, 0.875. That's real but I'll put an angle of zero on there just to remember. All right, we got one half for the VB, all right, so that's uh, 0.5 at an angle of zero for VB. And then the one eighth, which is a 0.125 right, for VC. Okay, now, Continuing on over here for node B. All right, same deal. I want to look at node B, figure out what are my currents coming in, what are my currents coming out, what do we have? All right, so over here I see um, I2 is coming in, I4 and I5 are coming out. I2 is coming in, I4 and I5 are coming out. So we'll do the same thing. Write these in terms of... Uh, the Ohm's law equivalence, right? So what is I2? Well, that's going to be VA minus VB divided by that resistance, the 2 ohms. What is I4? Well, that's VB minus VC divided by the 1 ohm. And let's see, I5. So that's this current here through the uh, capacitor. So that'll just be um, VB divided by the minus J5. All right, same deal. Um, we'll collect up our terms and whatnot, simplify this. So we don't have any constant terms here, right? You know, we don't have like a fixed uh, current feeding it or anything. So this is all going to sum out to zero. Um, 
the sole VA term we have is over here, so that's going to wind up being a negative one-half I'm going to skip the angle on there because this is getting a little tight. Um, the VB term, we have multiple. We've got the a one half over here, um, one over one, and then uh, the one over uh, minus J5. All right. So that we're going to have a 0.5. Uh, I'll tell you what, I'll write them like this so that we can actually see all the little bits there. Okay, plus one over one, plus. 1 over minus j5, and that will give us the VB term. Now, what's the VC term? Mm, only see the 1, okay, so we've got the uh, minus 1 over 1, okay. Uh, we'll write it like this. Simplify that to 1. All right, same deal, just combine these things up. All right, so we got 1 and a half plus 1 over minus j5. Um, simplify that write that all down. Okay, so our second equation is going to be 0. The uh, VA term is uh, minus 0.5. The VB term, so these things right here are going to simplify to approximately 1.51 at an angle of 7.6 degrees for VB. And then, that's the easy one, right? You basically have 1, 1 at an angle of 0, whatever you want to call it. Now we're going to have to move on to uh, C. So I'm going to stick node C over here, all right? What do we have as far as node C? Well, I can see IX is coming in, IY is coming in, uh, I4 is coming in, I6 is exiting. Okay, so we've got four things coming out, uh, coming in, right? Ix plus iy plus the i1 plus the i4, and all of that has to equal the i6. Okay, all right. I um, ix and iy, we know what those are. Ten on angle of zero plus four at an angle of ninety. Okay, what is I1? Actually, we did I1 back here, right? I1 is VA minus VC. VA minus VC uh, divided by its value, 8 ohms. And then I4, we've done that before. That's VB minus VC. Divided by the 1 ohm. Okay. And then it has to equal I6. I6 would just be VC dropping across that inductor of J10. Okay, once again, expand this thing out. See what we get out of it. Here's our constants right here. So when we add the 10 at an angle of 0 and the 4 at an angle of 90, that combo is going to give us 10.77 at an angle of 21.8 degrees. Okay. Um, VA terms. Well, I've got a 1 eighth over here, right? That's going to turn into a negative 1 eighth on the other side. So I'll write that down. VB terms. We just have the 1 over 1. Okay. And then what do we have for VC? Well, there's a 1 eighth there, there's a 1 over 1, and we've got this 1 over um, J10. All right, so 1 eighth plus 1 over 1 plus 1 over J10 VC. Same deal, simplify this. Okay. Uh, I'll tell you what, let's just bring that right up here. All right, so there's our constant. Uh, the minus one eighth, all right, that's going to be uh, 0.125 at an angle of zero for VA. 
Um, pretty easy for the VB again, just one or one at an angle of zero. And then finally, uh, the one plus the eighth and the one over J10 works out to 1.13 at an angle of negative 5.1 degrees, okay? And that is times Vc. All right, so the next thing we want to do is check for diagonal symmetry, okay? Uh, this is a little skewed the way I've drawn it here, but the diagonal would be going from A through B through C. And then we look off um, the sides of that, right? So that would be, well, we actually have these guys right here. And then the VA would be out through there, right? And then that one there. So minus 0.5, minus 0.5, minus 0.125, and then the minus 1. So we have our symmetry. Beautiful. Now we can, with some confidence, solve this set of equations. All right, so we can come in, um, if we have a calculator, remember these values here, these are your B coefficients, so um, that would be B1, B2, B3. All right, this is your first equation, so this would be um, the, the, the uh, 0 0.875 at an angle of 0 would be the A11, first equation, first element. The minus 0.5 at an angle of zero would be the A12, and then the A13 would be a negative uh, 0.125 at an angle of zero, right? And that's, this would be the second equation, so these would be your A21, A22, A23. Third equation, um, A31, A32, A33, right? So we grind those through, or, you know, you, you do it manually uh, using expansion by minors or you know wh whatever technique you want. Ultimately, we'll come up with a set of values. VA will be roughly 11 at 72, deg 72 degrees. VB is 23.9 at 34.6 degrees. And VC will be 31 and a half at an angle of 37.2 degrees. Now once we have this set of values, we can find anything in the circuit, right? I take those three voltages, put them back in these points, and I can find any branch current that we're interested in, right? So there's VA, there's VC, I can find the I1 value, okay? There's VA and VB, I could find the current through the two ohm. Um, I can find the voltage across any given component by, it's, it's either uh, a given value, like for the 4 ohm, it's just VA, or something like the 2 ohm, it's going to be the difference between two node voltages, VA and VB in this case. All right. And having done that, we have basically solved the entire circuit. There's really nothing else that we need to uh, dig into, right? We've got all the currents, we've got all the node voltages, and from that, you know, we're basically done. The only other thing we could perhaps do is maybe figure out some powers and the resistors and so forth. Um, but that's almost a trivial exercise. All right, we have a follow-up video coming after this, which is going to look at another way of approaching this problem and um, a way to verify that these answers are in fact correct. Because right now you're sort of trusting that you've uh, solve the set of equations correctly, or for that matter, that you even created the equations correctly beyond just um, having diagonal symmetry, okay? And that's where we'll see it next time.